Hi, welcome to Metro Women's Health. I'm Dr. Yvonne Thornton. I'm a board-certified obstetrician gynecologist, and I've been in the field of women's health for about 25 years. I'm also the author of Woman to Woman, a leading gynecologist, me, uh, telling you about your body and your health. But tonight, we're going to be talking about what's utmost in a lot of women's minds, which is being overweight and obesity. About 53% of Americans, usually women, uh, are obese, consider themselves obese. Remember the New Year's resolution that you promised yourself you're going to lose weight? Well, it's almost at the end of the month, and what have we done? But tonight, we're going to discuss what is obesity, how can we overcome obesity, and the alternative medical as well as surgical treatments for obesity. Our guest tonight is uh, Dr. Sandra Fu. She's an endocrinologist at the Van Italy Center for Nutrition and Weight Loss at the St. Luke's Rose Hill Hospital Medical Center, and she works with the Jocelyn Center for Diabetes. Welcome. Thank Thanks you for being on Thank the show. Thank you for inviting me. Well, can you define what obesity is? What is the definition of obesity? Um, obesity is actually a complex uh, uh, phenomenon, and uh, as many physicians as there are, that's as many uh, definitions as there are. But for the general woman, what is she considered? What's the difference between overweight and being obese? Okay. Um, most physicians go by a certain criteria, mm -hmm. okay, uh, which is a body mass index. Now, what is a body mass index? Mm -hmm. What that is, is it looks at the weight up as compared to the height. Now, that in itself, uh, we have certain breakdowns. Anything uh, between uh, 25 and 27 is mm -hmm. considered overweight. Now, when you say 25 and 27, the old Metropolitan Life tables had small frame, medium frame, and large frame. And, right. you know, basically an elephant frame is what I needed. <laughs> so when you talk about body mass index, we're concerned about numbers. And if that number is greater than, I guess, 29, you're considered to be obese. Right. And numbers are key now, and that takes everything, small frame, medium frame, and large frame into consideration. Right. So with regard to overweight, what types of Americans, what type of Americans usually are obese? Now, I'm, I'm black, mm -hmm. and I know that in our uh, culture, being very thin is not in. Right. Uh, and so that's why we may consider being a more um, bustful woman, a more heavyset woman is not really being obese, but in reality we are obese, many of us. Um, you definitely have certain predispositions in different ethnic groups. Um, African Americans, the Indian population is also uh, very prone to having obesity. Mm -hmm. It's also not just obesity. Mm -hmm. Well, just to get to the definition of obesity, most people feel that it's related to percentage body fat. Now, what percentage over your normal body weight do you have to be in order to be considered obese? Well, you know, and that's variable, and different people will give different definitions. Mm -hmm. And that's why doctors have trouble defining obesity, because when you give someone a BMI, which is a body mass index, you're just looking at a height and a weight, and it doesn't tell you a breakdown of body composition. And so Arnold Schwarzenegger, based on a BMI, will be overweight, mm -hmm. uh, morbidly obese, um, was, whereas someone else with a higher body percentage uh, is really overweight. Is this based on fat percentage or just basically just the weight of the scale? Uh, you really want to look at fat percentages, mm -hmm. and the way we tend to evaluate people is we don't just look at weight and height, we look at anthropometrics, we measure body fat, mm -hmm. skin folds. Uh, you can get really high tech in advance and do um, uh, special studies to look now at Now with respect to uh, becoming less complicated, what about a person's diet? Mm -hmm. Now how does that affect uh, becoming obese, becoming overweight, uh, the low fat foods that we have now, they say it's low fat but they may have other things that can cause us mm -hmm. to be overweight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what, how does diet play a role with respect to obesity? Diet is very important, and it basically comes down to how many calories you're eating. How uh, does one know the calories that they're supposed to be eating? You, you really need to look at uh, your body weight and calculate it, and your doctor can go over that with you. So the average woman who's lo who looking at us out there tonight, hopefully, mm -hmm. could calculate exactly how many calories she should be taking in right. and basically see if she's quote-unquote overeating right. or not. Well, one basic formula that we use is we go by the kilogram weight, not the pounds, but kilograms, metric conversion, and we multiply it by about 25. Mm -hmm. And that'll give you a ballpark number of, you know, how many calories a person used just at rest without doing a lot of extra exercise and things like that. Well, exercise is important, too, I'm sure. Now, right. when you break down the diet, just how much fat, how much protein, how much carbohydrates, uh, uh, can you cheat a little bit and still be okay? I think that uh, people are so consumed with having the right proportions, and I think that they just need to eat healthier. 
The recommendations are to eat less than 30% of fat in your general diet, but even the kind of fat is really important. Uh, the type of fat, the monounsaturated, the polyunsaturated, mm -hmm. are a lot more uh, helpful and healthy for your body than animal fats. So even the quality of the fat is really important. Now with children, with respect to fats and their fast foods, is it important with respect to what they eat and what they do with, their, with respect to their diets? Absolutely, because everything starts very early you in life. You think it starts as a child? Absolutely. And um, the school diet, typically, mm -hmm. which uh, most schools have an outside vendor, mm -hmm. uh, is not really the most nutritious diet available. And so we need to look at children mm -hmm. starting off young with habits at that age they tend to go on to adult obesity. So mm -hmm. the kids who are obese tend to have adulthood ob obesity. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> well, we're going to be coming back with uh, two women who kept their weight off, something that I could never do, uh, from the only way, and hopefully you'll be back with us. getting home delivery at the New York Times. Get a head start on your day with the New York Times delivered to your home each morning. Call now and save 50% off the regular home delivery price. Where else can I sit down with deal makers and power brokers, then to a French wine country? I'll be for my first cup of coffee. Where else but the New York Times? With convenient home delivery, you'll have a world of fresh perspective waiting for you first thing, with coverage you won't see, hear, or read anywhere else. Plus, each day you'll enjoy special theme sections like the arts, Sports, a new section on dining each Wednesday, a new house and home on Thursdays, and the celebrated times on Sundays, all for just three sixty dollars a week. Where else can I start my day on the same page as the world's most influential people? Where else? The New York Times. Order home delivery of the Times right now. Call 1-800-248-1004. Gets me thinking. It gets me going. The New York Times. The 1998 New York Yankees. Rarely has a baseball team so completely dominated an entire season. Now you can own the video that captures all the action. Call 1-800-637-8172 to order the official video story. Polygram Video and MSG Network present the 1998 Yankees, the season of their lives. Follow your favorite team from spring training to the ticker tape parade. Call 1-800-637-8172. Don't miss your chance to own this very special collector's video. Only $13.95 plus shipping and handling. Call 1-800-637-8172. Welcome back to Metro Women's Health, and I'm Dr. Yvonne Thorne, and tonight we're talking about obesity with Dr. Sandra Fu, who is the endocrinologist at the Van Italy Center at Nutrition and Weight Loss at St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital. And we've been joined by Carol McCarran, as well as Kelly Wenquist of The Only Way Incorporated. And uh, Carol McCarran founded The Only Way. You've lost 70 pounds and kept it off for 27 years? 27 years. How did you do that? Um, well, what we're about is, at The Only Way, is we're trying to get people to learn that they have to find their own way of doing it based on all the things that they've done in the past to lose weight, because most people do regain it. Mm -hmm. But they have to create their own way of doing it, when which I've done. When you say doing it, you mean talking about weight loss. Now, in the last segment, we talked about obesity and defined it as now it's a body mass index of greater than 29, and it's important with regard to our diet. Uh, that it not be too high in animal fat, and that children, uh, it starts off times when one is a child and uh, prepubertal. Uh, how did, now, when did you start knowing or learning that uh, you were like a little heavier than the other kids at school? When I was born. <laughs> uh, I was about, uh, it really, really escalated when I was about 12. And um, actually, I, I think when I was about 10, <coughs> I really saw it for the first time, but didn't do much about it. But by the time I was 13, it really, really got out of hand. When you say got out of hand, was this a lot of uh, social 
stigma a attached with being over it, not getting into your clothes or not being included in things? I mean, I, I think my weight gain came because there was a big lifestyle change. I moved mm -hmm. uh, when I was about 13 years old, and my relationship with food changed drastically at that time. So. Before then, I ate and I enjoyed it, but then I started really to become an emotional eater, though I didn't know that at the time. Now, having kept the weight off for so many years, do you think that people say willpower? Do you think it's more emotional eating or people say just push yourself away from the table? Uh, something simplistic for those who may not have, quote unquote, I think a distorted relationship with food. Um, in your case, was it the first diet that you said after the first diet, I gained 20 pounds like most of us? Uh, I didn't start gaining weight until I went on my first diet, and that's when most people start thinking of it. Is it is it a, a beginning and an end, or is it an ongoing thing that you start to? There's a beginning to it, but as Kelly always says, mm -hmm. there's no end to it. Now, Kelly, this is, there's no end to it. Thank you for saying it. Now, <laughs> when there's no end to it, it seems, oh my God, it's going to be the rest of my life. It's, and people say it's a long, drawn-out. Uh, process and turns a lot of people off. I think that's why I think overweight be becomes obese and morbidly obese. In your case, having kept it off for so many years and the lifestyle changes that you believe were responsible for being uh, overweight. Um, like Carol said, there, and, and I've always said this, there is a beginning but there is no end and it's important to realize that somewhere in your weight loss process. Um, I have maintained a 78 uh, pound weight loss for 11 years, mm -hmm. and um, does it get easier? I don't know. Um, as years go on, I get better at it, and I think it's a practice of doing the things that I found worked for me. Now, Dr. Food doesn't believe in diet. You don't believe in diets. Well, I don't believe in a diet that has a name to it. I believe in eating right and eating for life not to be on something short term so that you'll lose you know 50 pounds in a month and then mm -hmm. regain 70 pounds and I think that they made a very good point is that it's always a work in progress it doesn't stop in a month you just have to know that you want to go for a long-term effect what well, I think versus the short term you see the commercials I lost five pounds I lost ten pounds I'm saying I want to see that lady you know 20 weeks from now or, or 20 months from now that she's gained it all back how did you keep the weight off? I mean, how, it's, it's not just diet, I know, and, and we're in a culture of convenience. So do you force yourself to go to the gym? Do you need to go to the gym? Do you walk? What do you do? I mean, how do you keep it off? Um, it's work. It's, yeah, like Dr. Fu said, um, uh, diet does play an important part of it. Um, I have found that exercise helps. Um, I lost all my weight without exercise so I thought that you know people found that to be uh, a little odd but I find that it's helpful in the process of relieving stress and also helping with um, allowing me to eat a little bit more <laughs> <You mean cheese? laughs> if I exercise so yeah and I enjoy exercise I think um, you can change and tone your body um, I think there's three basic parts uh, to weight loss and um, they all work intertwined. I, I like to think of it as a three-legged stool and um, the first leg is the mindset in the mind and the second is the food program or your diet and the third is exercise and if you take one leg out of that stool well can you balance that? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but only for so long. So and then, and then you take a second leg out and you're in trouble, that stool's going to tip over. So you try to get all three balanced at once, but it doesn't always happen. It's difficult. Well, we have Virginia from Brooklyn. Uh, do you have a question? Virginia? Uh, yes, I do. Um, question that I have is I've been reading so many different materials regarding, of course, different diets. And um, basically I wanted to know um, I was reading one book uh, by Dr. Uh, Atkins, uh, his diet revolution mm -hmm. uh, regarding carbo carbohydrates, and I wanted to know what was the difference in the carbohydrate diet as opposed to a protein diet. Dr. Fu, could you answer that for us? Sure. Um, Dr. Atkins' diet primarily focuses on reducing carbohydrates in the diet. Uh, carbohydrates contain uh, any kind of sugars, starches, breads, pastas, that type of thing. And so he goes to very low carbohydrate levels. Um, some people feel that carbohydrates uh, increase your appetite, 
increase a lot of the insulin production in the body and um, you know, make you retain fluid. But you have to be careful to go uh, um, not beyond an extreme because you can actually get into a lot of trouble when you reduce carbohydrates sufficiently. And you can get a condition called ketosis. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a, it's a diet that's hard to stick with. Well, so ketosis, when people say ketosis, is that, what is that, starvation? Ketosis is when your body needs a certain amount of starch mm -hmm. uh, to function. It's like the main gas, gasoline that right. your body likes to use. And when you don't have enough of that kind of gas, it's like switching over to diesel. And so you start breaking down fat, which breaks down into ketones. Which you really don't want, want to do. You so don't I want to thank the not caller, in a dangerous by the way, level. for, for yeah, that wonderful it's question. Da it can be dangerous. Now, being dangerous, we just have a, a few seconds left with respect to... Uh, to keeping off, off the, uh, the weight and, and starting in childhood. And, and I just think basically because food has become an industry that we have to be very cognizant of the fact that it's there. We have to be very careful of what we eat. Uh, we're basically going to, uh, in our next segment, have uh, you see the traditional approaches with regard to counseling, weight loss programs. And uh, we'll be talking to Dr. Dominic Galladeta, who is a surgeon. Uh, bariatric surgeon dealing with uh, uh, very obese women uh, with respect to obesity. AMC behind the screen. He said, You're going to win the Oscar. I really was scared that I would not be able to play it well enough. It's just insane. It's Hollywood like you've never seen. Oh, yes, the mold was completely painted on. Barbara Streisand, great talent, very difficult to work with. Maybe as a teenager, I wasn't that delighted with reality. The stars, the stories, the straight talk. AMC behind the screen. Sundays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, only on AMC. The 1998 New York Yankees. Rarely has a baseball team so completely dominated an entire season. Now you can own the video that captures all the action. Call 1-800-637-8172 to order the official video story. Holly Grant Video and MSG Network present the 1998 Yankees, the season of their lives. Follow your favorite team throughout their historic year. From spring training to the ticker tape parade, cheer all your heroes and treasure the memories. Go behind the scenes during their spectacular regular season. Enjoy a close-up view as they charge through the playoffs and reserve the best seats in the house as they sweep the World Series. One team, one mission. Baseball's greatest dynasty continues. Call 1-800-637-8172. Don't miss your chance to own this very special collector's video. Only $13.95 plus shipping and handling. Bring home the 1998 Yankees, the season of their lives. Own a piece of baseball history. Call now. 1-800-637-8172. Metro Traffic and Weather, the only 24-hour channel with up-to-the-minute local traffic, rail, and weather reports for the tri-state area. No news, no sports, no hassle. Find out before you get stuck. Metro Traffic and Weather. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Metro Women's Health, and I'm Dr. Yvonne Thornton. And right now, t we're talking about obesity, and with us at this second, we have Dr. Dominic Gadaletta, who is a surgeon, the man with the knife. <laughs> and we're talking about other modalities and, and how to, to deal with obesity because it is very, it's a very, very serious uh, condition. Some people call it a disease. But before we go into that, our telephone number here is 1-877-MSG-METRO. Um, Dr. Fu, it's the magic bullet out there now. We're talking to Meridia and now there's this new, who's yet to be FDA approved pill for, for weight loss. Weight loss. Uh, what do you think about that? Um, Orlistat is the medication that's being looked at. A, a recent study just came out. Um, and it looks promising. Uh, the way that it works is it uh, affects the digestion of fat. And so you can reduce your absorption of fat by 30%. Mm -hmm. And so by reducing the total calories that you absorb, fat calories, uh, we can hopefully help with weight loss. But don't you also lose some of the vitamins that are fat soluble like vitamin D and E and and K with, with respect to that. That's a wonderful point, mm -hmm. and you really have to be careful 
Mm -hmm. uh, large populations, especially in the elderly, you have mm -hmm. to watch vitamin D, especially when we're in osteoporosis mm -hmm. and those type of diseases. Um, oh. Vitamin E, very mm -hmm. important for protection of the heart. That's another. All the fat soluble vitamins are ADEC, A D E K. Mm -hmm. So all of those vitamins can be affected mm -hmm. with this type of uh, uh, introduction. Well, what do you think about these diet pills? And basically, what patient selection with respect to your surgery? Uh, that, that, that you are interviewing patients who may require your surgery? The, the, the patients that come to me are generally uh, have a BMI of 40 or greater. Um, it's about 100 pounds overweight, and they've really exhausted every other uh, avenue. Uh, they haven't been as successful as, as others in, in losing weight and keeping it off, and, and they really have tried to do so. Um, medications, uh, the ones that we have now and the ones that we had before in general, can only give you about a 10% loss in weight. So if you're 100 to 200 pounds overweight and you lose 10 or 20 pounds, you still have a long way to go. Now, with regard to the type of surgery that you do, there was the stomach stapling, mm -hmm. there was the bypass surgery, uh, and this is a Ruin Y uh, sort of surgery. Is mm -hmm. that a combination of, of the two? Uh, and how bad is it when we talk about that this is the, you would say, last-ditch effort or la our last resort for many morbidly obese patients who may be twice uh, the normal size. But this surgery uh, could help those. But what, what are some of the downsides with respect to well, the surgery? I like to think of the surgery as uh, a tool for the patient to really do the things that he or she knows they should mm -hmm. be doing. Uh, it gives them a smaller stomach. Yeah, could you explain the surgery to us? I mean, sure. We, mm -hmm. we put four rows of staples uh, across very high up on the stomach, uh, gives the uh, patient a, a new stomach that holds about an ounce. And so Only an ounce? It holds about an ounce. I see. Okay. It'll take them about 45 minutes to an hour mm -hmm. uh, to finish a Weight Watchers meal. Mm -hmm. uh, what we find is someone who's 100 pounds or more overweight uh, uses calories more efficiently. Mm -hmm. So for them to feel well mm -hmm. and to lose weight, they need to be on about a 1,000 a, a to 1,200 calorie diet. The um, if you just did the stapling, uh, a certain percentage of patients will fail because they'll convert to soft calories, mm -hmm. ice cream, fast foods, which uh, you need a smaller volume to get a large amount of calories. The bypass um, really teaches them not to do that because there are some side effects if you were to eat now, those soft speaking calories. Speaking of, of side effects, now do these side effects across the board with the type of uh, the gastric surgery or mm -hmm. stomach surgery, I mean, we've heard of diarrhea, we've heard of uh, patients may not be able to stand up quickly. We've heard of actually having it done uh, over again mm -hmm. with respect to surgery. What is the success rate? Uh, what's the more, if there's any deaths associated with this uh, surgery? I know it's, it's very, very uh, serious when one has to uh, resort to this. Well, I mean, morbid obesity in, in and of itself carries a very high mortality rate. I mean, the life expectancy for a morbidly obese person without surgery is about half of what it would be if that person wasn't morbidly obese. So if you operate on them, even non-bariatric surgery, um, it, it's risky. The, the overall mortality, though, nowadays with modern anesthesia is about uh, uh, one, ha one half to one-tenth of a percent. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, at 10 years, the patients that have undergone surgery uh, have 10 times greater likelihood of being alive than the same person had they not had the surgery. Well, Carol, what do you think about all this? You, you've lost a considerable amount of weight, kept it off. Well, I think the thing that is not addressed is um, the emotional aspect of all these things because, as we all know, um, overweight people eat beyond hunger. So, you know, from a nutritional and medical point of view, um, I know there are a lot of people trying to help us, mm -hmm. but if you haven't gotten up in the middle of the night and eaten like four pieces of bologna and a mm -hmm. couple of pieces of cheese, mm -hmm. that, that understanding mm -hmm. isn't there. So you think it's like more of an emotional... That goes beyond I think it's a, a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. but I, I think that one of the things that isn't out there enough is week by week support mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. people. They have to be in contact constantly with people who have the same problem, right. and it has to be run by somebody who does it every day. That's why a lot of mm -hmm. people go to nutritionists, but mm -hmm. it doesn't get them anywhere. Speaking of, what, what do you think of the stomach I think that it's, it's really an important adjunct to, to mm -hmm. uh, treating weight, but it doesn't replace, as, as uh, the guest says, um, down-home basic uh, importance of nutrition and exercise. 
And I think one thing that the, the stapling or any of the uh, gastric surgeries helps is to help a morbidly obese patient reduce... And we're talking really seriously uh, overweight. Usually about 100 pounds overweight. Mm -hmm. To reduce to a level where they're more comfortable being active. So really, it's not the magic bullet, but it helps them get to a level where they can keep the weight off. So if you don't do all the other things and you don't have the nutrition... Um, yeah, I'm at the Van Italy Center, and so we take these people preoperatively and postoperatively, and they tend to do better with really intensive nutrition guidelines. Now, is this for poor folks and rich folks alike? I mean, you know, basically because of the, the diet and lower socioeconomic uh, people that they tend to be obese and, and uh, morbidly obese. Is this, uh, do, you, do you perform the surgery on uh, poor folks too? Uh, uh, I do, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, curiously and statistically, Poor folk do less well than, do. than other folk, and I, I think a lot of it is the support. Mm -hmm. and I, I think there was an excellent point, and we have ongoing sessions with patients, teaching patients, and who can relate to uh, everything that they're, they're going through. Well, thank you so much for coming with us today. First, I want to thank Kelly Lundquist for being with us. I want to thank you, Dr. Fu, Dr. Gattelata. And we'll be making news tomorrow, Fifth Avenue will be decked out in rainbow colors for the 30th annual Lesbian and Gay Pride March. Parade steps off from 57. Very glittery, it's very glamorous.